Hello. Hey, it's me, Snugboy. This is my face. And we're gonna do something a little bit different today. Tears of the Kingdom is coming out. And I thought it'd be really cute to do a recap story time and my experiences with Breath of the Wild. And I would have done it in a usual heavily edited voiceover type video, but I'm busy and I ran out of time. So, this is what you get. I got Twilight Princess poster though, that's pretty cool. So treat this as sort of like a casual podcast sort of thing. There'll be some gameplay here. Whoa, movie magic. And we're just going to talk a bit casually about it. I'm going to say um and like and probably some swear words a lot. So come on in, get your Nintendo Switch, get your popcorn, get your overpriced slushy soft drink from the movie cinemas. I paid $20 for that the other day. It was actually kind of ridiculous. And let's talk about The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. So first off, it's been six years since this game came out, which is kind of insane. But the history of it really goes back even before that. The first trailer was in 2014, I believe, at E3. And it was of Link on that wide horizon of a view. And IJ and him went click, and there it was. And it was just like, whoa, here it is. The Wii U Zelda, Zelda U as we called it back then. I can't believe that was a thing. And I remember just being so blown away and seeing Link run through and jump and pull the bow and arrow and shoot it at the Guardian, which we didn't know it was called that back then. And I was enamored, you know, it had only been three years since Skyward Sword. I was sort of the age at this point, I was about 12 in 2014, where I could actually kind of understand the hype and what was going on. I mean, I was nine when Skyward Sword came out. I didn't really understand the concept behind. I just thought they released them whenever they wanted. It was just like, mm, boom, here's a new Zelda. I didn't think it really clicked to my brain that they had to take years to make them, that sort of thing. And I was so excited. And I just, I remember telling people at school, I was like, look at this trailer to this game. It looks so cool. And do you remember the, the, the controversy? There was like, everyone was like, ooh, is Link a girl in this one? It looks a bit girly. Because I guess Breath of the Wild Link is a bit androgynous looking, but I guess we can get into that later. But I was so excited. And, you know, I was 12. I thought, you know, it's probably going to come out next year when I'm 13, 2015, which is what they promised. And then delay, delay, delay after delay. The game just kept getting delayed. And I mean, fair. They were just doing something they'd never done before. Or I guess the industry had never really done before, but... My 12, 13, 14 year old brain would not have it. He would not have it. Um, and then I guess I did have to have it because I had to wait like everybody else. I remember at class in 2015, I went up to this guy and we were talking about Zelda and I was like, <laughs> I lost faith after, um, after they delayed the game again. And he was like, are you a fucking idiot? What are you talking about? Like they have to, these things take time. And I was 13, I guess. And I was like, oh, how dare you say that? But he was right. These things do take time. And that guy has really long hair and a massive beard now. So, you know, what am I doing? And then 2016, I was a fresh, plucky 14 year old. I had my first girlfriend and I remember showing her the trailer. This is a very visceral memory for me. I remember we had, we built like a blanket fort with like fairy lights and stuff and everything. And I showed her the trailer to Breath of the Wild. It was the name drop and it was that beautiful, beautiful E3 trailer with the, the beautiful piano and the flute comes in. And it's just showing off the scenery of the world. And I think it's still one of the best game trailers ever. They didn't even show off anything that exciting, really. The only bit of combat was one backflip and one of those flurry rush moves, but there was something so exciting about this massive open world Zelda. I don't think these days, or really many times since that trailer, for any game, you can get excited just about seeing the world in these games. Most open world games feel like before then, they were following the, the Ubisoft Assassin's Creed formula, and then after this, there's, there's sort of been a hybrid, but I find it hard to look at a trailer for a game and see the world and get excited, but that was just the main takeaway at this point. But still, I remember, I turned to my 14-year-old girlfriend, I was 14 too, and I said to her, it looks great, but I don't feel like there's much incentive to explore the world. We'll come back to that. Blah, 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 blah. The Nintendo Switch gets announced in October and I remember I was in Hobart for a, for a school thing and I was like, oh, everybody, check out this trailer. And by everyone, I mean, I'm just texting that girl again, I guess. And it was the reveal of the Nintendo Switch. It, it, it just, that trailer was so good because I was such a Nintendo fan, even through the Wii U. I bloody, um, my friends were like, they loved Xbox, they loved PlayStation, but I was in the bloody trenches. I was there with the corpses crushed under the tank of embarrassment and I... <laughs> 
What am I talking about? No, but it, it was kind of it was kind of hard to be a Wii U fan and like have your friends come over and you had the Wii U and you know I just but I just love Nintendo and I always have and seeing the trailer of the Switch just pop out and just it made so much sense. It was a TV thing and then it was a handheld thing and I remember seeing that small glimpse. The guy picks it up to walk his dog and he has Zelda just a little bit that little smidgen more of gameplay and then the 2017 Switch presentation trailer. They were just a, it was a big event to talk about like the Switch in general and stuff and at the end they showed off the Breath of the Wild trailer and this trailer to this day is one of the best game trailers I've ever seen in my entire life. It's beautifully scored, punctuated with the most thrilling sequence of shots and visuals. It shows off the world, it shows off the combat, it shows off the rune abilities. It just got you so excited for Zelda and it showed so much story and so much voice acting which was so new for Zelda and it was so exciting and is not representative of the final game at all, but it got me so hyped. And then three months, no, not even two months away, it was when the game was gonna come out. And I was so excited, so, so, so excited. I somehow, I don't remember how, I don't think I had a job. Maybe I was working at KFC at this point, but I, I was 15 and I, and I pre-ordered the Switch and March 3rd came around. It was a Friday, I was in class. Okay, cool, now to the next class. Okay, cool, that was in the last class for the day. We were learning about this really horrific like event that happened in Australia and I was like that's really awful that's terrible I'm really sorry I'm really sorry that happened but I really want to go play my Switch. <laughs> the second the bells rang, I ran to my sister's car and she took me to EB Games and we got it. I got the big box of the Legendary Edition with the Master Sword and all the cool little nicks and knacks and I had the Switch and unboxing it for the first time was so exciting. I think it was the first console I ever bought with my own money because yeah, I think, I, think, I think that would have been true, yeah. And just putting it in the dark and putting it on the TV and starting the game was like genuinely magical. That first weekend with Breath of the Wild was such a, a blur of fun and wonder and I just had such a lovely time. And like a little kid, I kept taking the switch out of the dock every five seconds just to be like, ooh, it's handheld, ooh, it's docked, ooh, it's handheld. It was just such a fun time. Ah. And then I played the game. That first time playing Breath of the Wild is still I'd say orgasmic, almost. It's so euphoric. It's such a fun game to explore. That world is so big and there's so much to do. And it's it's one of the only games that I feel like exploring is such a wonderful part of it. I remember a thing people said at the time, but it doesn't feel like you level up in the traditional sense, but you as the player level up. As you get a bit of game sense, you get better at exploring this world, whether it's taking down guardians or learning to, uh, uh, sl uh, learning to snowboard down the hills. It's just such a fun time. One of the big things about the game obviously was how non-linear it was and that was such a big deal compared to the previous Zelda games, especially Skyward Sword which was so hand-holding and so linear and I think we sort of appreciate that a bit now after Breath of the Wild, but I might get into that a bit later. But I wanted to shake it up a, a little bit. I know a lot of people wanted to do like side quests first, or they just wanted to explore everything first, or they wanted to get the Korok seeds first, or they wanted to do the dungeons first, but I thought it'd be quirky and I would do all the cutscenes first because I love story and it was one of the things I was really the most interested about. So I went all the way around and I did all the cutscenes. I remember like asking someone on Reddit, like, cause one of the cutscenes is in Hyrule Castle and I was like, oh, can I go there but not do the final stuff? And they're like, yeah, bro, don't even worry about it. And I was like, wow, Reddit, W for once in their life and they never had another. And exploring that game is just so fun and I have so many cherished memories of the things you can do. One of the highlights for me oddly was the sequence where you have to dress up in the Vi, Gerudo Vi outfit and sneak into Gerudo Village. I thought that was really cute. I loved all the fashion stuff in general actually. I just thought it was really fun to, like, to dye your clothes or to get different outfits. Like I liked the Sheik one, that looked really good on Link. And getting the hero's tunic just really worked so well. I think it almost would have been sacrilegious to suggest Link to wear another color than green before this, but it just worked so well and now you think of Breath of the Wild Link and you think of the blue and it really, really suits him. Seeing all those guardians all over the grassy plains and then getting jump scared by one with that amazing piano run that goes down to that really weird electro funk beat. That was so scary and so horrifying. The sequence where you find the lost woods and you have to go through using the flames to guide you through the darkness and then you get the master sword. And I still think locking the master sword behind you actually leveling up and progressing through the game with enough of your, your um, hearts. I think that was such a brilliant move because the, acquiring the master sword's always been a story beat, but here it's a gameplay beat. And that's such an interesting change that I think really, really works. And I still think the best sequence of the game 
by far is Hyrule Castle. Storming up to those doors if you choose to take it that way, and slowly pillaging your way up this castle, looting every room, defeating these tough monsters, exploring all the secrets. It was so, so good, and it's such a shame because that's what I feel like the dungeons should have been in the game, and they weren't. The thing with Breath of the Wild is, I loved it that first time around, but I remember even on my first playthrough, getting 60, 70 hours in and being like, meh, I'm done here, I'm ready to finish it up, let's go beat Ganon. You gotta understand, and I feel like I allude to this in my videos a bit, but I'm not a very really a big completionist. I think I've only ever 100 percented like two games. I just love following the main quest. If a, if a game tells me to go somewhere, I'm just gonna go and do it because that's, that's what they want me to do. I've gotten better at as I've gotten older, but definitely when I was 15, I just kind of wanted to do the main stuff. But I did. I do remember trying to push myself to do more, but you can only do so many shrines, especially when a lot of them are just repeats of the battle ones over and over again before I got a bit sick of it. And the fact that they've all got the same aesthetic I think was a really silly decision, because it made them all feel so samey. I think it would have been cool maybe if they experimented with elements a bit more, maybe have like plants overgrowing them and stuff like that, because they are ancient. It was just a bit weird they were all just this weird Sheikah blue technology. It honestly kind of reminds me of Portal and Portal 2, they, they all have that same aperture science, samey feel, and it works in that context I guess, but not this one. And that was actually a weird comparison, I don't know why. I don't know why I did that. I remember beating the game and just kind of being a bit like okay with it. I was just like, oh, that, yeah, that was good. It was sort of the first Zelda game that I ever beat as it came out. I was really happy about that. But overall, I was just like, kind of like, yeah, it was good. And then the months sort of went by and I just didn't even think about it. I remember like six months after I bought my Switch, I was I was thinking about how like I had nothing else to play on it. Because that first year, especially at the start, was such a drought. And then Super Mario Odyssey came out in I think October of 2017 and I played it and I loved it. I fell so in love with it. It was like the perfect Mario game and I, and I had played Mario before but I'd never been in love with it but I just fell head over heels for Odyssey. And I remember thinking at the end of that year, I'm like, I can't believe I liked a Mario game more than a Zelda game this year. And then kind of the months went on, they turned into a year or two and I thought back about Breath of the Wild and I don't know how much I loved it. I mean, it was great, it's Zelda, and I think the thing I always wanna stress when I talk bad about Zelda games is they're Zelda games. The worst Zelda game is still the highest compliment ever. It's such a beautifully magical, intrinsically linked to my life series that I love with my deep, deep heart so much. But for some reason, I felt like Breath of the Wild just didn't leave that magical impact that the other games did. It was the things like the lack of story. I know there is a story obviously in the cutscenes and the flashbacks, but it feels so disconnected from the actual game. The lack of dungeons, there's four, which shouldn't be a problem because there's only four in Majora's Mask, but there they're all really beautifully themed and very interesting and so linked to the area around them in Termina, but here they're just there and they all have the same gross aesthetic. Okay, it, maybe it would be fine if they had the same aesthetic if they weren't so ugly. They look really bad, right? Like they're so gross and just I don't know what that noise was, but really disgusting. There's some really frustrating mechanics too that kind of gave me the ick after a long playtime, like the items breaking. I know there's just an endless debate about this, but I was not the biggest fan of it because like I think a lot of people say, it's a good idea sort of at the start of the game when you've got lots of weak weapons, but as you get to the end of the game, you get all these powerful weapons, but they still break pretty frequently. So you kind of get scared of using the good stuff and then you're just kind of hoarding it all and there's never a really good time to use it. And then when you get the Master Sword, you can't even use it for that long either. So it just, it just, I don't know. Not a fan. The rain, I get I get why they want to do the rain. They wanted the world to feel real, but oh my god, the rain just is such a cock block to any progress. You just have to stop and just wait. Maybe make a campfire, but if you're halfway climbing up a wall, you can't make a campfire there, can you? No, you're climbing. Spider-Man can't make a fucking wall campfire going outwards, and we're not even playing as Spider-Man. Why would I bring that up? I said it before, but all the shrines, there's so many of them, and so many of them just feel like you've done them a million times before. The Korok seeds were great, but again, I sort of just was whatever about them. And I know it said a hundred years after the calamity, but like it was a bit weird. None of the NPCs really gave a shit about it. They were just living their life, which I actually know that is kind of a, yeah. So after a year or so, I looked back at all these things I didn't like about Breath of the Wild, and for a bit, I felt like I became a bit of a Breath of the Wild hater. Ooh. ooh. And it's probably around that time that I made that video some of you guys may have seen, Is Breath of the Wild a Good Zelda Game? Look, it's a bit hard to watch these days. I feel like I've definitely grown as an editor and a presenter and a whatever, a snugger. But I still think some of the points I make in there are, are good. The big takeaway with a video like that though is it's just I love this series and I want to love these games. When I criticize anything, 
I don't like making negative videos in general, and I feel like this with that Xenoblade one I just made. I don't want to make negative videos, and they're not fun to make, and I just kind of get sad about it, and, and I know I'm going to get backlash and stuff. But I criticize these things because I love them, and I want them to be good or line up more with what I like. And so when I made that Breath of the Wild one, I think it was just the sort of frustration I was feeling. And I could feel that online too, sort of, you know, no one dared say anything bad about it, except for Super Bunny Hop. I remember he made a negative video about it when the game came out, but maybe apart from them, it didn't really feel like anyone talked about it negatively as it came out. But after a year or so, I feel like people started to kind of peek their, you know, their heads up and say like, ah, I don't actually know if I like this very much. I kind of miss a lot of the stuff from the traditional Zelda format. And me too. I love a narrative. I remember there was a weird sort of sentiment when the game came out that linear equaled bad. And I think we've sort of flipped back on that because linear is good. Like it can be good. So is non-linear. Like it's just different ways to make your games. I like when a story is structured through a linear process. Like I just, it's it's fine. Like I like a story in a game. I like dissolving myself into those worlds. And, and that's, and, but the motivation that carries you through is the story. One of the big criticisms that I've sort of gone on and off about all these years is the music. There is good music in there, stuff I would sort of consider in line with the rest of the series, like, like the Cork Forest or the Stable theme or the Paracel minigame theme, but exploring the field and a lot of those musical themes is just very, like, whatever. And I know it would be annoying to hear like every six seconds, but it did feel the world leaving a bit empty and I don't know how much I liked it. But one of the things I really growed on over the years was the story told in the flashbacks between Link and Zelda. I think maybe because it wasn't so uh, directly linked to the gameplay, I sort of hated it the first time around. Or not hated it, I was a bit disappointed with it. But if you do look at those flashback cutscenes, they do tell a really interesting story. I think the Breath of the Wild Zelda is one of the most interesting incarnations of the protagonist we've gotten. The idea of this magical power that she has within herself, that she, everyone is expecting her to do, and her whole bloodline can do, and her mother, who's the only person who knew much about it, is gone frustrate Zelda so much and it's so interesting to see this dynamic. I feel like before we've only ever seen Zelda really in a perfect position. She's never been too vulnerable except when she's being directly captured by Ganondorf. But here it's a super interesting internal conflict she has to go over and I love how they kind of make her hate Link at the start. I talked about this in the Link and Zelda video but that was more of a romantic context but it is an interesting way to portray the princess. Having her slowly slowly punish herself just to do this thing everyone expects her to do and she's so frustrated that she can't do and then not even be able to do it in time. Time. Ganon attacks like, uh oh, wah, wah. oopsie doopsie. And that cutscene with the guardians all looking up at the Ganon emerging, and they're all like, oh well, I guess we're out of time. Let's try and do it. And they all die. Like that was very grim. And I think it was really interesting to have Ganondorf win. And I think Zelda games are always kind of done that though. Ocarina of Time, yeah, it's normal at the start, but after the time gap, Ganon's won, you have to beat him back. Uh, Wind Waker, Ganon kind, not really won, but like, you know, sort of won because the, 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 the gods had to flood the world. Twilight Princess, like everything's in Twilight, you have to re-win it back. I think it's a it's a dynamic they've done before, and it just works as a, as a, as a, and as an objective and reward for the player to win back the world on, on a zoomed out scale. And then her power is finally coming through when it comes through with her love for Link. Like that was just so lovely and 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 gorgeous. And and she really becomes the powerful princess I think we've always really wanted her to see. People always say about Twilight Princess Zelda, which I love, that she's like very strong and powerful. And I think, you know, she should have been a queen instead of a princess, but she's in it like three times. So it's hard for her to leave an impression of that sort of stuff. But here Zelda really does become the ruler of Hyrule, the leader of this nation that's failing. And she's, you know, she, she gets her powers and she tells the she could have take Link to this to the resurrect resurrection sleeping chamber portal sleeping pod thing. Why am I bringing portal up again? And then she marches right up to Ganondorf and she's like, "Hey, bro, you and me, we're going one on one." And she she's not captured by Ganon, which I think was a really nice change. And it's nice to see her sort of evolve over the years. She's the one keeping the world safe. She's kind of tormenting herself for a hundred years to keep everyone else safe and. That kind of makes it funny when Link's shirtless and doing flips and uh, snowboarding, you know, naked and 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 spending time looking for Koroks each because she's probably like, Oh my god! I'm so in pain! Can you just please fucking help me, Link? Ah!
I've only played Breath of the Wild two times. I played it when it came out and I played it for that video again. And I've played the Great Plateau a million times and I genuinely think that is maybe the best part of the game. It's like the entire game condensed down into just like an hour. And it's so fun to play and it's like you get the perfect little example of everything, but it really is the whole game just there. So everything you do there, you do for the rest of the game. And yeah, I mean, there's cool other things you can do like Eventide Island or stuff like that, but I don't know, I just... Everything in the game is just there already and I feel on that small scale I always really liked. So where do I stand on Breath of the Wild right now? You don't bloody stand on it, you bloody play it. <laughs> I think right now I I like it. It's not my least favorite, but it's not my favorite either. I think maybe they just took it a bit too far with the Zelda formula. It sometimes didn't really resemble the Zelda I knew and loved. And not that I always want us to be beholden to that Ocarina of Time format, but sometimes I just felt like it was a different game with Zelda slapped on top. Now maybe that is a bit too harsh, but the way the dungeons weren't really themed or anything or a big deal, lack of a present narrative, and the lack of some themes, I just felt like it was a bit weird. And what I find really weird is people still who treat this game like it's a perfect game. It got a lot of 10 out of 10s at the time, and I agree with those in the context of 2017, but I think the game has not very much replayability, and I just think the, the faults of the game become stronger and stronger as time passes. It has a lot of faults which could be fixed in a sequel which gives Tears of the Kingdom the opportunity to do the funniest thing. Okay, so obviously let's talk about Tears of the Kingdom. I'm actually very excited now. For ages I was a bit of a Tears of the Kingdom hater. They showed the first trailer in 2019 and again I was sort of in that era where I was just a bit whatever about Breath of the Wild. I was like, oh, that's cool. And then they just didn't show anything for like two years or three years even. And I just kept being like, where is this? What? When's this game coming out? I remember in 2019, after I finished high school, my friend said, oh, they could probably like release it by the end of this year, right? And I was like, uh, probably, probably, probably not. I know game development takes longer these days, but I did for some reason have in my mind that, you know, Ocarina of Time to Majora's Mask was only two years. So it could be around, you know, two to four years. And obviously I was very wrong. The distance between Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom is, I think, I think the longest time between any 3D Zelda games, and I know COVID was in the middle, but that's a very big stretch. I was getting very frustrated for a very long time because every trailer was just not showing off that much. It was just the world again. And I was like, we've already explored this world. Why should I care? And then I'd go on Twitter and YouTube and Discord and everyone was so excited and I felt like I was going insane. I was like, "What? we've, we've been here, we've done that. It wasn't until that very last trailer they just showed where they showed a bunch of that story stuff where I was finally, they finally got me. All that story stuff looks so incredible. All these new characters, what they're doing with Zelda and Link. She's in the new outfit and she's got the tear. Maybe she's connected to the past. I just, I'm so excited. I'm brimming with theories. I'm brimming with anxiety and again, excitement and I cannot wait to play it. And all that new gameplay stuff looks good. I like I like how they're really going in on the whole Banjo-Kazooie nuts and bolts Minecraft build. See how far your imagination can take you. I love all the stuff with Link and and like the NPCs and they're going on quests together. Or, you know, you walk past the quarry and he's asking for a quest. It feels like the characters in the world are going to be more interlinked with what Link is doing. I like all the Skyland stuff. I like how you can merge things together. I think all the gameplay stuff looks interesting. And now I understand why it's taken so long. But I got this excited about the trailer before Breath of the Wild. And then it was nothing like that. I think... They're probably going to respond to that criticism. Sometimes Nintendo can be a bit, you know, reliant on criticism for these things. So we'll see how it goes. But as of now, I'm really excited. And I really hope, I think it would be so funny if this game was so good that no one ever wanted to touch Breath of the Wild ever again. That would be so, so hilarious. Matthew Mercer as Ganondorf. That's going to be incredible. Also, Ganondorf is very hot in this one. I was streaming the reaction and every single girl, no, actually, I think just everyone in the chat was just going so horny for him. Why would they take his shirt off? I, I didn't, I just never thought he'd be buff for some reason. I thought he'd just be more of a dad bod. Twilight Princess Ganon's like got a bit of a beard gut in my mind, but I guess he's just had this six pack the whole time. Sick. Unfortunately, the art book leaked a while ago and I tried to mute all the words off Twitter, but some Japanese account posted a picture of something. And I was like, mm. it was nothing big, but still, I just don't like to be spoiled about anything. And the game's ROM leaked like a week or two ago. So people have probably played through the entire thing on an emulator already, you know, before the game's even officially come out. And this one guy went into my comments on the Zelda Link video and spoiled something for me. It wasn't anything massive, but I was like, why would you do that? And they were all sly about it too. They were like, ooh, 
dot, dot, dot. Don't ask how I know. I know how you know. Stop being a fuckhead and spoiling it for people. Oh, if anyone spoils this game for me, I swear to God. Oh, oh I just don't. I hate spoilers. Please don't spoil me. Please. Thank you. But I'm just excited. It's exciting to get a new Zelda game. It only happens every five to six years. I was 15 when the last one came out and now I'm 21. I'm an adult now. Like the next one's gonna come and I'm probably gonna be 28 with seven kids and three wives. Like three, not like polyamorous as in like two ex, you know what I mean? Well, obviously not because I had to explain it, but you know what I mean. And so that's sort of been my journey with Breath of the Wild. I'm really excited to see where they take this series next. I did like Breath of the Wild's world, but I will be honest, I kind of wish we were already at the next incarnation of Hyrule. I'm not super attached to these depictions of Link and Zelda. I would have been fine if they rebooted it again, but look, I know a lot of people do like these ones, so... Let's see what happens. Breath of the Wild sold like 28 million copies of something, which is absolutely insane. And they got back the Japanese market, which they sort of lost along the way. Twilight Princess, they really doubled down on the Western audience because the Japanese game sales were diminishing ever since the first one. Actually, fun fact, in Japan, Phantom Hourglass and Spirit Track sold way more than Twilight Princess, which is boggles my mind just the way the markets are different but with breath of the wild they really got the japanese fan base back and it really feels like a global series again if you look at the sales like a nerd like me so i'm excited i can't wait to play it i can't wait to see what secrets it has in store and i just really hope out of anything that i really really enjoy it i will be streaming myself playing the game right here on my channel which i stream a lot of things on if you would like, I would love for you to come by and say hi. If not, the VOD will always be there for you to watch my reactions. And the video I'm going to do after that will be a Tears of the Kingdom review. Snug Boy video thing. But tell me your thoughts and your stories and your experience with Breath of the Wild and your hopes and fears for Tears of the Kingdom. I genuinely really would love to see them and hear them. I just love the comments so much. It's my favorite part of even YouTube. I just love getting comments. It's like, ooh, what's the, what's the tea? What's everyone got for me? I hope you like this sort of weird podcast sort of thing. I hope it was okay. Maybe if you like it, I can do it more. Maybe I can make it like a members thing. Oh, oh, thank you for the members. Thank you for the members. You guys are awesome. You get to see this video early and you get to see sneak peeks and you are really cool and really sexy and really funny and really tall. Unless you don't want to be tall. You're just really cool. That's what I'm trying to say. No, but thank you to the members. I really appreciate it. Thank you to everyone who watched and thank you for everyone who left a like and thank you for everyone who left a comment. And even if you didn't do those things, thank you for watching and just have yourselves a wonderful day and weekend. And I really, really hope you enjoy the game. Stay snug. Bye-bye.